Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about my mountain bike that I converted to a road bike just over one year ago. Uh, I'm going to talk about what I've done with this bike over the past year, how it worked, and answer some questions and comments I've gotten in the comment section. And then finally, I'm going to talk about the future of the bike, what I'm going to do with it going forward. This video is amazing. It is actually my most popular video in terms of views on my channel to date. It has 228,000 views, over 500 comments, and yeah, recently overtook my prior, much older, most popular video, which was a ring I made like way back in 2015 or something like that, or 2016. So according to Strava, I've done 1,462 kilometers on that bike so far, but actually I've done more because I've rode it to work and back uh, quite a number of times, so you can probably add in a couple hundred extra kilometers on there, so you know, easily 1,500 kilometers. One of the most uh, fun things I did is I took it to Mallorca, which is in a Spanish island. I have a video on that. I can link it in the description. And there I rode with a bunch of other people, including a couple YouTubers, so that was a lot of fun. Probably the highlight of riding that bike this first year. Uh, another thing I did is I rode up Weissenstein, which is a nearby mountain here, and it was it's a pretty darn hard mountain to ride up with uh, probably upwards of 20 uh, degree um, climb, so really steep, tough ride. That was pretty fun. Again, I have a video on that I'll put in the description. I did a KOM attempt on a flat course that my friend set up, and I got a video on that I'll put in the description. I was able to ride stage 6 of the 2019 Tour de France. Not the whole stage, but the last climb. Again, video in the description. I got to ride up Alpe d'Huez, the, I guess, probably the most famous climb in, in all of cycling. Uh, again, that's in the description. And I did Girton Classic Road Race, which is a local race that's in November uh, with this bike. So in one year, I've actually done a lot with this bike, and that's not even counting all the normal rides and group rides and everything else. These are just video um, the rides that I have videos of. Uh, needless to say, I did quite a bit with that bike in this year, and I wasn't even really trying that hard to make a big deal of doing a lot with this bike. It's just the only um, working condition road bike I have, and I uh, really got into road biking this year, I guess. Okay, so next I wanted to talk about how it actually worked as a road bike, being that it is a mountain bike, actually. Um, or was a mountain bike. So how did it work? Overall, I think it worked great. Um, I never had any problems with it. Surprisingly, my little uh, extension to the brake uh, caliper, what's it called? I think it's called like a drop or something. Uh, I didn't make that up myself. Like I, I, people make these things. So, so that actually worked surprisingly well. I didn't have any issues with it at all. I don't even think I took it off one time since I installed that or tightened it up or anything. The little cuff I made, the spacer I made for the front also worked perfectly. Almost to my surprise, I, you know, I kind of would jiggle it a little bit here and there, but there was really nothing to do, and it was totally fine. Overall, the bike's been great. Brakes good, handles good. I really can't complain too much about the bike in general. There is one problem, though, I have to admit. One problem. The main issue I did have with it was the front derailleur, which wasn't that surprising because... Um, the throw on the mountain bike uh, derailleur is different than the throw which would have been on a road bike and um, it just never really worked that good. What I ended up doing is, like right now I have a 3 by set up, so I have three rings in the front and I set it up where it only uses the middle one and the bottom one. And with that it works okay, it has enough throw to reach those three, or those two. But if I do all three, sometimes it'll reach all three, and then sometimes it won't re be able to reach all three, and I've had times where I'm going up the mountain and I can't get it into the smallest ring and I'm pushing, I'm pushing. Uh, even when I went up Alpe d'Huez I had that issue and I had to actually stop on the bike with my finger, push, give the chain a little nudge to get into that smallest ring. So set the stop screw so it'll only use two of the uh, chain rings. And then it was okay, I mean it wasn't like great, it wasn't like... Uh, you know, you just tap it and it goes over. It was like you're pushing it twice sometimes. I mean, it wasn't great. So that is the biggest problem. The front derailleur uh, never quite worked right that I faced. But everything else was fine. The braking was, you know, pretty good, good enough. I, I guess it's the same as any road bike. I've also had to disassemble it multiple times. When I took it to uh, Mallorca, I had to, you know, disassemble it quite a bit to put it in the bike bag. When I went to, uh, to France the two times to do those rides, I also had to do... 
uh, disassembly to place it into my car. So it's been taken apart and put back together a few times here and there. But yeah, actually, the performance has been surprisingly good. I would say better than expected. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is get into the viewer comments and questions. Some of these are, are, you know, real questions. Some of them are kind of funny. Some of them are whatever. So the first one I'm going to read is from somebody in my Hack and Ride Bikes Facebook group. And if you want to join that, I'll put a link in the description for that as well. And he said, do you have any issues with being too stretched out? How's the handling compared to a real road bike? Any ideas for upgrades? So his main question is... Um, yeah, how is it, is it too stretched out, um, can, and how is it compared to a real road bike? Well, keep in mind, I've only rode a few different real road bikes. I had my Pinarello, which was a bit too small for me, I think. And, um, like, once or twice I've rode other ones just for a short time. So, first of all, I'm not that experienced riding road bikes. But, um, at the beginning it was pretty stretched out, but I ended up taking the stem from the Pinarello, which was, I want to say, like 90 millimeters or, or 80. So it was a little bit shorter than what I originally had, which was on the original video. Um, and it was okay. It, it was, you know, kind of stretched. I would say it was pretty low and aggressive. Uh, but I had no problem riding well over 100 kilometers. Um, I wouldn't want to go too far. Probably would eventually get uncomfortable. And I did find that on longer rides, I was just sitting there riding on the tops, especially when you know I'm kind of just out in the open. There's nothing to worry about uh, because it was pretty low and pretty long. And the bike itself is very long. I had put it up against the Pinarello or beside the Pinarello, and it was I, I don't remember right now, but I would say at least six inches longer or more than the Pinarello was, so it's a very long bike. Um, my opinion on that is though that it actually made it handle pretty good on descents and higher speed stuff. Uh, probably it's not as nimble as a more narrow, um, not narrow, but shorter wheelbase bike. So, but in the end of, at the end of it, for me anyway, uh, when I'm riding it, I never thought like, oh, I'm too stretched out, the bike's too long. I just rode it and it was fine. The next comment says, and by the way, I'm posting it because it has 118 likes, so it was like the most liked comment. It says, submit this to GCN, you have a winner. Well, thank you for that and everybody who gave a thumbs up on it. I did actually send it to them, um, you know, saying, hey, if you want to um, share this in your hacks and bodges or, or whatever, you know, segment you want, but I never heard anything back, so I guess they weren't interested in it. Another person said, bike stand costs more than everything in that room put together. They mean the bike stand that I have. And that, that's not true. I, I'm very certain that everything put together cost more. But I will say that the bike stand was the, probably the most expensive one tool that I have in the shop. <laughs> this person says, as a fabricator, I applaud your resources and creativity in solving problems. As a bike builder, this made me cringe. Final product is pretty cool. Well done. Yeah, thanks. I can, I can see that perspective. I'm a bit of a fabricator myself, and even I cringed when I made it. <laughs> well, the, the, reason because, the reason I say that is because I used to work in a real shop, a real metal shop, and I had access to expensive machinery, you know, $100,000 machines and whatnot. So what I'm doing here is really, really basic and kind of cringy. But that's what you got to do. The next person says, you could have avoid some work in destroying the seat post, that seat post, with some long range calipers, although this, although it's impressively cheap and functional solution. The headset work is cool, but hammering cups is a bad idea. You can easily make yourself a press with a threaded rod, uh, some washers and nuts, and a piece of wood or nylon. All in all, well done. I don't disagree with any of that, yeah. <laughs> uh, I probably should have made one of those um, bearing Compressors, I don't know what you call it, the, you know, some kind of thing with a rod that would help compress the bearing that you tighten down with the nut. Uh, I've seen those before. I, it's probably not a good idea to hammer, you know, like bearings and stuff like that and press fit things into aluminum. Uh, and I, when I was doing it, I was scared, no question. When I was doing it, I was like looking really close, like not wanting to get it sideways, trying not to crack the aluminum would be the worst case scenario. But maybe I got lucky. It ended up holding up fine. There's no cracks. I do inspect it pretty often just because I'm afraid one day a crack is going to start appearing and the whole headset's going to blow up or something. But uh, so far it hasn't. Here the next comment says uh, from Ed Rush says, Friend, this build is inspired. I love that you repurposed a frame that you love. And the hack for lowering the rear caliper was genius. You get maximum kudos from me. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate it. Being a do-it-yourself or myself, I was wondering, do you ever worry about bending your frame when you hack off headsets 
or hack other things. Seems like you have to hit pretty hard sometimes. Great video. Uh, yeah, I am. I do think about that. And this one, I wasn't really afraid cutting the the uh, fork, you know, shorter at the top with at the stem. That didn't worry me because I I leave it, I gave it plenty of room to clamp. So I think it's totally fine. In general, though, I don't like to hack away at the frame because, uh, as other people also say, the frame is kind of like an area you shouldn't mess with generally <laughs> because the manufacturer made it the, as light as usually about as light as they can. So you really shouldn't be like drilling holes or hacking things into it. Uh, so I generally would also avoid that. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to kind of use your head a little bit and think is this a, a safe thing to do or not. Um, I don't know. It almost, yeah, it's it's hard to say. I mean, you, when you do stuff like this, you take a risk, I think. I think you take a risk. But you always take a risk. When you go out and ride your bike, you're taking a risk. So, you know, hack at your own, at your own risk, I guess. Next comment says, did you run into any problems changing the 26-inch wheel to a larger size? No interference of wheel with frame or any other problems. Actually, no, I didn't run into any problems. I thought I would as well. But I think because the even though the wheel is larger, it's also much shorter than a mountain bike wheel. So I think when you set the 26 inch mountain bike wheel right up and tire right up beside the 700C road bike tire and wheel combo, I don't think it's that much higher. And because it's a mountain bike, it has a whole bunch of extra clearance anyway. So no clearance problems whatsoever. The, um, yeah, nothing more to say there. I had no clearance problems. Uh, somebody says, great video. What product did you use to clean the cog, the cassette cogs? Thanks for posting. Um, that was, I don't remember the name of it, but basically it was lighter fluid. It was some kind of lighter fluid. I think I replied in the comment itself. I'm not, I'm, I have screenshots of the comments now, so I don't know what my answer was, but basically it's lighter fluid. And I, I just did that because it was like one or two bucks. And it just seemed like an easy, cheap way to do it. And I guess that's like alcohol or something. Honestly, I'm terrible with this stuff, but uh, whatever it is, it just like rips through the, the grease and it comes right off. So it works for me. It's probably not the best product, but it actually has worked pretty well. Next person says, how did you make the spacing work with the 700C wheel, uh, bear, wheel bearing? It's 130 and not 135 like a 26 inch wheel. Thanks. Basically, he's right. And I think somebody else uh, mentions it too in the comments. Maybe I'll get to that one. But uh, I, I ended up, I, at first I didn't do anything. Like in the initial video, I'd actually just used the uh, wheel right from the road bike. But then later, uh, because of some of the comments and because I noticed I was like having to squeeze the frame in and it was like moving like five millimeters in or whatever it is, I did notice and I was like, that's probably not good, but maybe it'll be okay. Um, what I ended up doing though is taking the axle and the bearing races and everything off of the mountain bike which was the wider one and putting it onto the wheel for the road bike. And just by luck, it was exactly the same diameter. The bearing races were exactly the same. The threads were the same. So I was able to transfer it right over everything the same as the mountain bike had. So of course it fit because that was what was on it to begin with. Uh, somebody says, and I've had a couple comments like this. Can, can you give me the yellow frame? Well, if, uh, if you want the yellow frame, I think I'll have it until Saturday and then I'm going to take it to the dump and I'll actually have to pay uh, to have it recycled. So if somebody wants it and somebody's in Switzerland, you're welcome to have it. Uh, this is kind of fun to show how much modifying is possible. And sometimes a little even makes sense. But 68 degree head tube angle and super long chain stay, question mark, that's going to handle like a cruise boat. <laughs> you, you can usually find some frames of at least the right shape for free in the trash, if not a few dollars at a garage sale. Well, like I can mention before, actually, I thought the handling was fine. I kind of get what they're saying, though. It is a long, a long bike, and the chain stay is long, but I don't know. I rode with a bunch of people when I went to Mallorca, and I could ride just like they could, and we all had fun. So, yeah, whatever. It works, but it's probably yeah, not the best road bike. I, I can admit that. Uh, somebody else here says, I have a giant ATX 870. I've done basically the th same thing, but correctly. Not bad for an amateur, though. Yeah, thank you. The trick you did on the headset looks hideous. You could easily order one online. I reckon the steer tube should be longer, just a little. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a great build. Well done. Yeah, you're right. Um, uh, whoever commented that, I didn't realize that they made those adapters until after I already made it. And then I did look them up, and they're pretty cheap. Would have been a better way to go, actually. I totally agree. 
And actually, if somebody's going to do this type of conversion and needs a adapter, I'd really, really recommend just buying one because it's going to be the correct press fit, not like, oh, I think it's right. Maybe I should sand it a little bit, maybe a little bit more. Oh, I don't know if it's right. No, definitely spend five or ten bucks and get the right uh, right adapter. That way you're not going to split your aluminum headset and, you know, die somewhere. Anyway, I, I, I agree. Funny name. It says, it's a beautiful thing to follow Jesus. He says, or she, so you put a road bike parts on a mountain bike frame, not a conversion. Okay. It says the problem or not when converting a 26 inch mountain bike with 700 wheel C wheels is that the bottom bracket is very high. For example, you have the seat height adjusted appropriately for the best performance with respect to the position of the legs. When you stop at a traffic light and put your foot on the ground, you will be uncomfortably high and will only reach the tips of your fingers. Maybe he means toes. Okay, I don't know what else is going on, what he's saying, but uh, basically saying like the geometry isn't right and you the bottom brackets do. And I think that's true. I think the mountain bike bottom bracket is higher, but honestly, I didn't notice any problem. And when I stop at a stop uh, light or whatever, I don't usually sit on the saddle. Usually you should get off of the saddle. I don't really think it matters what bike you're on. Don't You don't usually sit on the saddle when you come to a complete stop. Okay. Uh, that janky rear brake caliper mod is giving me anxiety. And also a derailleur with no hanger? What? <laughs> no, they didn't say what. But yeah, okay, whatever. Um, it seems to be doing fine uh, with, the, with the derailleur with no hanger. Uh, somebody says I'm an idiot and a barbarian. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. I think that's the first time I've ever been called a barbarian. Uh, next comment is pretty big. It says, as a bike mechanic and a longtime kitchen member, huh, I have done some really questionable things to my own bikes, but this shit just takes questionable to flat out dangerous. No one should ever use this as an instructional video. I like the fact that you work with your hands and made something maybe usable out of it. Saying that my Saying that, my code of conduct when I tinker is that I never do anything risky with brakes or forks because if any one of those parts fail, you get seriously injured or kill yourself. I also would like to warn about the mounting of a 130mm hub to a 135mm frame. Bent aluminum under high tension is at a big risk of structural failure and when it happens, it's pretty dramatic. If you ever have any doubts or questions, um, and you want to ask, please don't hesitate to reply RPM. So, you know, that comment is kind of negative and like maybe some people would think it's a bit rude, but I actually took it at face value and I did ask him, uh, like, what could I do about that uh, rear spacing? And he suggested exactly what I ended up doing. Basically, I used the, the correct, it, it, that was the post that made me say, yeah, I probably should actually put the right size axle uh, inside this hub, inside this frame. Because actually that was really helpful and, and maybe it saved my life. Who knows? Okay, so that was all of the comments and questions that I picked out. Thanks everybody for uh, making those comments and questions. I do appreciate it and feel free to do the same on this video too. I like to do uh, a lot of interaction and stuff. Okay, so the final part of this video, I wanted to talk about what is the future of this bike. And actually this is where the video is a little bit sad. Because the thing is, is I'm actually moving away from Switzerland. I've been here for uh, coming up on nine years and it's time to come back home. And I only have so much space in my luggage and the bike is too much. So the bike isn't coming with me. And on top of that, because it's a hacked together bike, because how I did everything, I don't really want to give it away or sell it away to anybody just on the extreme outside chance that they get in a crash and get hurt. Um, you know, I'm a pretty light person and I feel like I'm pretty cautious bombing down these mountains and some of them are very steep. Like I said, over 20 degree uh, gradients. Uh, some of them have like potholes and patches in the roads and I don't know, what if something broke? What if that brake adapter broke or what if something in the head tube broke or anything else on the bike broke? I didn't tighten something enough and somebody did get hurt. So being that it's, first of all, I couldn't get much money for it anyway, I'm actually going to disassemble it and throw it away. The frame itself is going to be recycled unless somebody wants it. 
uh, probably this Saturday. So in just a few days, I'll take it to the recycling center and the, the frame gets recycled. A couple of the parts, maybe the handlebars, maybe the brakes, I'll try to fit in my luggage and bring over to the U.S. But basically, the bike will be no more. It was a one-year thing only. <laughs> but don't be too uh, sad because I do plan to make another road bike of my own. Hopefully a little bit better than this one, but... When I get back to Florida, I'll, I'll eventually start working on that. So stay tuned for that. Um, but this one itself is going away. Uh, if you do have any further questions though about the bike that I didn't cover, feel free to put that down in the comments too. Um, that's about it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned for uh, additional videos. I still do have more that I'll, I'll probably make in, here in Switzerland before we leave. But uh, otherwise, thanks again for everything and uh, talk to you guys next time. Bye.